Welcome to Governance Now. This is Gitanjali Minhas and you're watching Checks and Balances. India has been battling severe air pollution in the recent days. Several studies and reports have been pointing to health hazards caused by air pollution. A study of 131 countries by Swiss group IQ Air has found India to be the world's eighth most polluted country and topping its real-time list of most polluted cities in the world is the national capital region of Delhi with AQI of 640 categorizing it as hazardous. Air pollution has no boundaries. It is increasing and becoming a recurrent phenomenon. Not just Delhi, but also other metropolitan cities of Mumbai, Kolkata, Bangalore, and even rural areas are facing air pollution. Pollutants of major public health concern are particulate matter 10 and particulate matter 2.5, which is ultra fine particulate matter and 30 times thinner than a single strand of air and if inhaled can cause cardiovascular and respiratory diseases. While we have the National Ambient Air Quality Standards recommended by the Central Pollution Control Board, but they are nowhere close to the global standards on air pollution. Air Quality Life Index published in August 2023 by Energy Policy Institute University of Chicago has found that the entire population of 1.3 billion people in India lives in areas with air pollution levels exceeding those specified by WHO of 5 micrograms per cubic meter. The 2022 State of Global Air Report has said that in 2019, air pollution alone has killed an estimated 1.6 million people in India, the highest number anywhere in the world. Why has air pollution become such an uncontrollable problem? What are the solutions? Are they achievable? <laughs> Professor Sachidanand Tripathi, Department of Civil Engineering and Department of Sustainable Energy Engineering, IIT Kanpur, here says. We are on the path of rapid development. There is actually economic activities are happening in every sphere of life. We have more industrial production. People are having more cars with them, activities which actually drives economy or economic activities, you say. Uh, some of them or most of them actually require energy. Source of energy use will actually determine what would be the emission or there wouldn't be any emission. And that eventually will of course impact air quality. Uh, we are trying to increase our reliance or dependence on renewable energy. The overall you know, fraction of uh, solar is increasing. Uh, we still know that we have a good amount of coal in the country a large number of people who are still, you know, dependent on biomass. Our combustion of a burning of biomass to meet, you know, their daily needs for cooking, heating, space heating, water heating, or many other things. That's what basically brings or emits different kind of pollutants. Elaborating on the causes of air pollution, Shambhavi Shukla, Program Manager, Clean Air Unit, Center for Science and Environment, says. Across India, is the number of sources is continuously increasing. Like the pollution is getting built up because of the high rise of population as well. The lack of implementation, the inadequate speed and the scale of action at local level, at regional level, at city level, at state level. The number of vehicles are rapidly increasing and there is no restriction or restraint mechanism that is present to control this number of vehicles on the road. And we can see that the congestion is on its peak right now. So when we talk about the metropolitan cities, for example, Delhi, Mumbai, uh, Kolkata and Bangalore, of course, 
So there is massive traffic jams that we can see on the ground. Smaller cities such as tier one and tier two cities mm -hmm. are also moving towards this kind of congestion that we will be seeing in future. Construction does that happens when a construction activity is going on. So there is a CND rules, the construction and demolition rules that was notified in 2016. So even a lot of places where these rules are not properly followed, dust is not being managed. The waste is openly dumped on the roads and on the grounds, which is causing a high level of uh, dust pollution as well. Solid waste management is the another sector which is causing a huge problem across Pan India. Again, have solid waste management rule that was notified in 2016. There is a target uh, by the Swachh Bharat mission that they need to do the complete legacy waste treatment by 2026. We cannot see that the target would be achieved by then because there is a lack of segregation, lack of management of waste uh, at every city that is happening. We do have Pradhan Mantri Ujwala Yojana that's present. Cylinders are being distributed to poor people. Problem is like you can give a subsidy uh, once to a customer buying that LPG cylinder. Refueling cost is so high that they cannot afford on a regular basis. Most of the thermal power plants are running on coal, which is a high polluting uh, fuel. And also there is uh, some other fuels which are being used by the industry such as petroleum coke, pet coke that we say and furnace oil. So these fuels have very high level of sulfur. Few states have already uh, formed their approved fuel list. So some states have already formulated that policy. Barring that across India there are a lot of states and cities which are still using these polluting fuels. Even though the government is taking several steps to curb air pollution, where do the problems lie? We need to think about ways where either we reduce the energy consumption or we try to shift into clean energy. The second part of it is basically just having better, you know, governance, have a more robust air quality management. They have better urban planning. You have access to the public transport or you encourage people to use public transport. So better interagency, better coordination between the states, uh, which in somewhat is not that also not being tried in the case of Delhi. It needs to be improvised. It needs to be perfected. A key reason attributed to air pollution in Delhi and CR is paddy burning in the northern states of Punjab, Haryana and UP. When we talk about the paddy burning, we can see that the whole endogangetic plane gets impacted because of the pollution of this double burning. Farmers doesn't have a choice uh, apart from burning because they have such a short span for the new crop to be uh, sown in, a lot of uh, infrastructure development and of course funding needs to be uh, rerouted uh, through mechanism so that farmers uh, do not tend to burn those stubbles and of course awareness is a big thing that needs to be in place right now. The government has adopted National Clean Air Programme to substantially reduce air pollution by 2025-2026 and has adopted various measures towards this. Delhi has grabbed a graded emergency response mechanism when its air pollution levels exceed those set by AQI. Emergency measures like odd even are band-aid stopgap solutions for problems which have been long standing. Another method which is being considered is cloud seeding. Cloud seeding is something which whose outcome is not very certain. You need certain meteorological conditions. Some clouds to be present. Amongst the instant intervention, if you may, uh, cloud seeding emerges as a choice because its side effects are not there. It doesn't have any adverse effect on humans or ecosystem, etc. So if it works, it of course can bring relief to a larger, relatively larger area. Right now under NCA, every year they are telling the uh, government we have taken these actions. But then there is no set target that they have in their mind that they need to achieve within that stipulated time. Uh, being in CSE, working with different state governments and central government, 
we can clearly see that the state doesn't have a target in place for example mechanical sweeping the cities doesn't have an appropriate road to actually run those machines right now these machines only run on those roads where there is end to end paving uh, present and the road is properly constructed besides humans air pollution also affects plants animals soil and water bodies as industrial pollution gets dispersed in water bodies affecting the environment besides causing cardiovascular and respiratory diseases air pollution also leads to lung cancer among several other health issues and even premature death at work it leads to lower labor productivity lower asset productivity and employ absenteeism estimates say that air pollution causes losses of dollar 95 billion in india annually which is rupees 7 lakh crore that is 3.3% of india's gdp there are very uh, clear estimates economic costs basically because of the health burden or hospitalization if you like and, and day off because of you know ill health primarily due to pollution now if you add the cost for example that if you need to bring grade three or something where all the construction activities are halted then that you know cost actually comes over and above that so it's a it's a massive cost and you know uh, so what you're saying that there always will be competing economical interests right financial interests when we talk about the health impacts when we breathe the air So PM 10 is going up to our lungs, but then what PM 2.5 does is when we are inhaling that uh, air, the PM 2.5 gets into the lungs and then it mixes with the bloodstream. Apart from a normal adult, children, kids, and of course the ad, uh, elderly people that we see, they are mostly impacted because of this high level of pollution. When we talk about other pollutants such as uh, nitrogen dioxide and uh, the sulfur dioxide. they are all um, have a similar impact uh, such as respiratory problems the cardiovascular problems uh, the copd we talk about uh, the skin irritation eye irritation a normal headache that we get does our air pollution policy have adequate linkage to health we don't have a proper linkage with the health our politicians also uh, sometimes say that we don't get like on a death certificate or on a morbidity certificate we don't get it written as uh, it happened because of air pollution so they don't think that this is a major problem but then in the ncap that is not of course clearly linked to the health uh, parameters but now the government is working on revising the national ambient air quality standards because already uh, like when we compare it to the other world like who their standards is very stringent compared to ours and already we have like 5 to 6 times higher standard than what they have prescribed Calculations by IQ Air along with Greenpeace Southeast Asia have said that in Mumbai so far in 2023 air pollution has caused 29000 deaths and a loss of dollar 2.9 billion in productivity Professor Tripathi who was recently invited by BMC to advise on controlling air pollution in Mumbai says <laughs> Mumbai's air quality is quite much influenced by all the other nine districts which surround it, which is basically MMRDA. Cities like Bhiwani and part of Kalyan, good part of Thane, and these are some of them are highly industrialized. Or so you cannot avoid that things happening there, and thereby emissions which are associated with those activities would not come to Mumbai when the wind will come from land to sea. If you want to have good air quality in Mumbai. you have to try to create air quality management which looks for entire mmrd not not only mumbai this is quite important that we deal with mmrda with a focus on mumbai we deal with the air quality of mmrda 
in the city center, the core commercial center of the cities, we should encourage as much as possible public transport. Public transport, we all know when you talk about metro rail, mono rail, or EV run buses, they have zero emissions. So overall, it's a sustainable solution where it actually makes people healthier and makes environment cleaner. We have about 20 government monitors now in Mumbai. And this is good as far as government setup is concerned, it's good, giving us good data. But having a effective air quality management and understanding of where the hot spots are, where are the sources lying so that we can take actions, we can, you know, make people who are responsible for them accountable. We need to have a more hyper local monitoring and that kind of monitoring can only happen. You cannot have then 400, 500 government monitors. These are very expensive, they are important. They cost 1.5 crore rupee each monitor, but we can augment it with these low cost sensors. So when you have 20 monitors and you can add 500 sensors across this city as well as the mobile so that you actually cover every square or two square kilometer grid of Mumbai. We need to bring more air quality management professionals, air quality engineers into our fold and our. We need to bring also into curriculum air quality management more. And Mumbai, since it's had many engineering colleges, universities, of course, there's IT, but none of these places across the country have air quality management course as of now. You need to have a good regulatory system, you need to have good technologies in place so that you are able to take actions as much in near real time as possible so that finally it has to be basically driven by people. When we talk about Beijing in China, so they could uh, reduce the pollution level within five years, they could reach the standard. But then the steps and the action that they took were very harsh on the people and of course but good for the environment and good for the people also it is a need of the hour to balance country's economic growth with sustainable development visionary and long-term solutions which require coordination between the government private sector as well as a civil society public health needs to be acknowledged as an important constituent of air pollution policy. Thank you for watching Checks and Balances.